It's one thing to say, dark energy is a cosmological constant and this is causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate. It's another thing entirely to actually understand it. And, and this is one of those cases, this is one of the cases in physics where the mathematics that describe this phenomenon are ridiculously simple. Incredibly simple mathematical equations describe the effects of vacuum energy, cosmological constant, dark energy, accelerate expansion, the whole package but actually putting it into words is incredibly elusive. And I'm going to do my best. I'm not going to promise that you'll actually understand anything at the end of this video because it is a very, very slippery concept, but we're going to work our way through it as best we can. And the key thing here, the key thing is an identification that was made back in the 1960s or so by a Soviet physicist named Yakov Zeldovich, who is a major, major, major figure, which you need to know about, but that's another video, feel free to ask. Yakov Zeldovich, he knew about Einstein's cos cosmological constant, a number that you can just put into the equations of general relativity. It allows, you know, the equations are flexible enough that you can just insert this random number he was able to make an identification that the cosmological constant known by Einstein in general relativity is the exact same thing as the vacuum energy known to quantum field theory. That the fields that permeate our universe, the fundamental quantum fields that soak all of space-time, provide for a constant energy in the vacuum. That if you take a box, if you take a box, get rid of all the particles, all the radiation, all the, you know, the methane, just everything, get it out of the box, 100% pure vacuum, there is still energy in that box. The energy is contained in the vacuum of space-time itself. Technically, and this is where we run into, start running into issues. Technically, that energy, if you calculate it in quantum field theory, like, okay, how much there is energy in the vacuum? How much? Valid question. You get a number somewhere around infinity, which is pretty annoying and telling you that you're doing something wrong. So you introduce some hacks, say, like, okay, maybe it's it's obviously not infinity. Maybe I'm just counting wrong. If I add up all the, the fluctuations in space-time and the fundamental quantum fields, I've got big ones and I've got medium ones and I've got little ones and I've got, excuse me, I've got teensy ones and super teensy ones. And maybe it only goes down to a certain scale, like at some length scale, like the Planck scale or something, some incredibly, something incredibly small, like maybe something happens down there that suppresses any fluctuations that are that small. And I just have to count the bigger ones. I'll just cut myself off. And you get a number. It's a large number. It's a number that's 120 orders to, of magnitude too big. That's 10 to 120 too big to explain dark energy. If you want these quantum fields to be dark energy, dark energy is actually a kind of weak thing. The, the observed, the measured weight of empty space, the energy contained in the vacuum is equivalent to about less than one hydrogen atom per cubic meter, which is not much at all. And this number, when you use the quantum field theory to actually try and predict that number, instead of getting one hydrogen atom per cubic meter, you get something like 10 to 120 hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. So why is there that huge difference? We honestly don't know. This is an unsolved problem in physics. But no matter the value, a constant energy density can provide for accelerated expansion. And the first question I usually get is, okay, energy in the vacuum, 
That means if I have a box and it's full of vacuum, nothing, it's actually full of vacuum energy. Okay, no big deal. And if I make a bigger box, if I stretch the box out, like mer, 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 I get more energy, right? The energy density or the density of the vacuum of the vacuum remains constant, but the total amount of vacuum energy goes up if I have a bigger box. Why doesn't this violate conservation of energy? Well, you can look at it two ways. One way is that conservation of energy doesn't apply the way you think it does in dynamic evolving systems. What you learned in high school or college or grad school doesn't apply in all cases in the real world. If we have a dynamic situation like a box moving or the universe expanding, conservation of energy takes a different form. Another way to look at it is that dark energy wants to resist the expansion of the universe. It wants, it, it wants to pull everything back in. <coughs> Excuse me. It wants to pull everything back in because it has positive energy and positive energy doesn't like an expanding universe as is mutual gravitational attraction. It wants to pull back, right? So as the universe expands, the universe expands a little bit, you get a positive increase in energy because there's more stuff there's more vacuum energy in the universe now, but it wants to pull back. It wants to, it has some tension to it. It wants to pull back from that expanding universe and it's going, it's working in the opposite direction. So the universe is going out. Dark energy wants to pull it back in. That is a negative work. That is work defined in physics. That is work applied in the against the direction of motion. You get a negative sign when you count that way. And the negative work is an energy, a negative energy that gets counted against the ledger, the balance sheet. So we get a positive increase to energy because there's more stuff, but we get more negative energy because that stuff is wanting to resist the expansion of the universe. It all balances out. Multiple ways to look at the mathematics are very simple, but it all, no matter how you look at it, it works out in the end and conservation of energy still holds. But where does accelerated expansion come in? This is where it gets really messed up. It is that tension, that resistance to expansion actually accidentally leads to accelerated expansion. And this is because general relativity connects matter and energy to the curvature of space-time. That, that, that's how it works. So the, these two things are related. They're hooked together. The way this applies in cosmology, the whole entire universe, you take all the ingredients of the universe, all forms of energy, that tells you how the universe will evolve, how quickly or slowly the universe will expand or contract. And you really have to add up all forms of energy, all forms of energy, matter density, dark matter density, radiation density, radiation pressure, dark energy, the vacuum energy itself, and this tension associated with dark energy. That tension is a kind of energy. Remember it added into the balance sheet and it affects the expansion of the universe. And even though the energies balance out, that the positive existence of dark energy is balanced out by the negative, the negative work, the tension that it applies to the universe, it turns out when, when, when you follow the mathematics, the tension, that negative component impacts the expansion of the universe far, far more than just the positive energy density. It vastly overwhelms it. And it turns out that becomes the most important thing. The tension in dark energy is the most important component in the universe today. Dominates by far all other sources of energy in our universe. 
this tension, this negative work, this negative energy. It's like the tension is so strong. It is negative to such a degree that the equations end up flipping around themselves. And instead of pulling back the expansion of the universe, it's so negative, it, it's repulsive. It acts as an anti-gravity thing and causes an accelerated expansion in the universe. And then it just keeps getting worse because the universe grows. Now there's even more dark energy, which means there's even more tension, which a deeper negative, which pushes back on the universe again, which causes an accelerated expansion. The presence of dark energy causes our universe to accelerate, the expansion to accelerate faster than if it were completely empty. The presence of the vacuum energy causes our expansion of the universe to accelerate even faster than if the universe was 100% empty and there was no such thing as a vacuum energy. That's how off the rails we're going. And it's due, it's sourced by that tension in the dark energy, vacuum energy field itself, where the positive value of the energy hardly even matters. Hardly even matters. What matters most in the math is that tension. I know it's, it's, it's tough to wrap your mind around. It's tough for me to wrap my mind around. The mathematics are amazingly clear about this behavior. You'll see a lot of discussions online following different tacks of trying to explain dark energy, how it causes accelerated expansion. There's a lot of tacks because it's, it's, it's hard to put into words what the mathematics is very simple about. So however you end up understanding dark energy, as long as it leads to, there's more of it and it leads to accelerated expansion, then that's okay by my book. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, make sure you're notified and go to patreon.com slash PMSR so that you can keep supporting the creation of these videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.